anticipating photography's increased popularity, in 1892 Eastman incorporated the Eastman Kodak Company. This was one of the first American firms to mass-produce standardized products and to maintain a chemical laboratory. By 1900 his factories at Rochester and at Harrow, England, employed over 3,000 people, and by 1920 more than 15,000. Eastman, at first treasurer and general manager, later became president and finally board chairman. To his basic principles of business, Eastman added these policies. Foster growth and development through continuing research. Reinvest profits to build and extend the business, and treat employees in a fair, self-respecting way. In regards to his employees and in building his business, Eastman blended human and democratic qualities with remarkable foresight. He believed employees should have more than just good wages, a way of thinking that was far ahead of management people of his era. Early in his business, Eastman began planning for dividends on wages for employees. His first act, in 1899, was the distribution of a substantial sum of his own money, an outright gift to each person who worked for him. Later he set up a wage dividend, an innovation, for its time, in which each employee benefited above his or her wages in proportion to the yearly dividend on the company stock. Eastman felt that the prosperity of an organization was not necessarily due to inventions and patents, but more to workers' goodwill and loyalty, which in turn were enhanced by forms of profit sharing. In 1919, Eastman gave one-third of his own holdings of company stock, then worth $10 million, to his employees. Still later came the fulfillment of what he felt was a responsibility to employees with the establishment of retirement annuity, life insurance, and disability benefit plans. Carl W. Ackerman, a biographer writing in 1932, said, Mr. Eastman was a giant in his day. The social philosophy, which he practiced in building his company, was not only far in advance of the thinking during his lifetime, but it will be years before it is generally recognized and accepted. The Brownie was a series of cameras made by Eastman Kodak. Released in 1900, it introduced the snapshot to the masses. It was a basic cardboard box camera with a simple convex concave lens that took two and a quarter inch square pictures on number 117 roll film. It was conceived and marketed for sales of Kodak roll films. Because of its simple controls and initial price of $1, equivalent to $33 in 2021, along with the low price of Kodak roll film and processing, the Brownie camera surpassed its marketing goal. It was invented by Frank A. Brownell for the Eastman Kodak Company. The name comes from the Brownies, spirits in folklore, in Palmer Cox cartoons. Over 150,000 Brownie cameras were shipped in the first year of production. An improved model, called Number 2 Brownie came in 1901, which produced larger 3.25 by 2.25 inch photos and cost $2, and was also a huge success. Brownies were extensively marketed to children, with Kodak using them to popularize photography. They were also taken to war by soldiers. As they were ubiquitous, many iconic shots were taken on brownies, too. On the 15th of April 1912, Bernice Palmer used a Kodak Brownie 2A, Model A to photograph the iceberg that sunk IMS Titanic and her survivors hauled aboard IMS Carpathia, the ship she was traveling on. He was a modest, unassuming man, an inventor, a marketer, a global visionary, a philanthropist, and a champion of inclusion. Eastman was a stupendous factor in the education of the modern world, said an editorial in the New York Times following his death. Of what he got in return for his great gifts to the human race he gave generously for their good, fostering music, endowing learning, 
supporting science in its researches and teaching, seeking to promote health and lessen human ills, helping the lowliest in their struggle toward the light, making his own city a center of the arts and glorifying his own country in the eyes of the world. Eastman died by his own hand on March 14, 1932, at the age of 77. Plagued by progressive disability resulting from a hardening of the cells in the lower spinal cord, Eastman became increasingly frustrated at his inability to maintain an active life. 